changed my mind. rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who have died in the last week particularly Marie E. Gavin Schmidt, loving mother of our dear friend Tim and to his wife Marilyn, grandmother, great-grandmother, sister and aunt, Donna M. Bisignani Hodgkins, devoted daughter, sister and aunt, Michael F. Sheridan, beloved husband, father of our dear friend Sue Ferkey, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother, and uncle. Jay Saunders, loving son, husband, father, brother, former Scranton city clerk, and friend to all who knew him. George M. Roskus, devoted husband of my good friend Joan, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, and retired principal at Prescott Elementary School in Scranton, and their dear families and countless friends who suffer their loss. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Mr. Loskin? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, audit status from Robert Rossi and Company, received November 8, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Single Tax Office City Funds Distributed Comparison, 2012-2011. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, minutes of the regular meeting of the members of the Scranton Housing Authority held on October 1, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held on October 24, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you, Mrs. Crate. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Yeah. Uh, just like to announce that uh, once again this, uh, this year there will be a tree decorating and lighting party at Connors Park. Um, that'll be Sunday, November 25th at 3 o'clock. Um, people are invited to come, bring ornaments, lights, whatever they would like to um, use to help decorate the uh, trees in the park. And uh, there will be some refreshments uh, for the, the children and the adults. Uh, that's Sunday, November 25th at 3 p.m. at Connors Park on Orchard Street. Is there anyone else? I have none. Councilman Rogan will not be in attendance this evening. Scranton City Council mourns the passing of our friend and former city clerk Jay Saunders. He was a devoted family man and gentleman 
whose infectious smile and sense of humor won him many friends throughout his life. Tonight, council members, our city clerk and assistant city clerk, wear purple ribbons symbolizing the ongoing fight against pancreatic cancer. In addition, the Office of Scranton City Council will make a contribution to the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network in Jay's name. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family during this most difficult time. Because of the Thanksgiving holiday, Scranton City Council will not meet on Thursday, November 22nd. Regularly scheduled meetings will resume on Thursday, November 29, 2012. The Scranton Lackawanna County Taxpayers Association will meet on Tuesday, November 20th at 6 o'clock p.m. in the Scranton City Council Chambers. Newly elected State Representative Kevin Haggerty of the 112th Legislative District will be the guest speaker. The public is invited to attend. Finally, on behalf of Scranton City Council, I'd like to wish everyone in our community a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. Mrs. Craig. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker this evening is Giovanni Piccolino. Good evening, City Council and fellow Scrantonians. Uh, Giovanni Piccolino. Let's have a quick, Good quick announcement on Thanksgiving. Uh, both locations of Bona Pizza in downtown Scranton and our newest one in Shemokin will be open from 11 to 2 o'clock. And we're just going to have a free dinner for the community. So whoever wants to come out, come one, come all. Also, if you know of anybody that's elderly or that does not have a vehicle that cannot make it to either or location, we would be more than happy to deliver it to their home. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that generosity. And you have a wonderful Thanksgiving as well. Andy Spraglia. Andy Spraglia, citizens of Scranton, fellow Scantonians. Uh, you were going to give us a lot of information on this bond you want to uh, actually issue, a series of bonds or whatever you want to call it. I know you don't have any much data, but exactly how much, how much money do we owe on A, B, C, D, F, what is it, A, B, C, and D of that, uh, was it 203? How much money is outstanding on that? Uh, Mr. Spiraglia, actually, um, under motions, I will be calling on our city solicitor who is going to provide all of the information about both pieces of legislation. Council Wait. solicitor. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. well, I, I was hoping he was coming down. <laughs> well, that's really the most important, other than... Are you talking about the other piece of legislation is the amusement tax? Yes, I'll be addressing that. Well, then it's foolish for me to ask questions if it's going to be addressed later. Okay, I'll open my ears and listen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doug Miller. Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, what I have tonight is uh, I did a few different right to knows at, with the business administrator, and um, they came down to Council. Um, before I went up after over a month, and I went to the business administrator and said I did a few right to knows. All of them had to do with Council. So I asked them where they were, and they had sent them down to Council. But um, before they sent them down to council, for some reason they ran them through the law department and I guess they figured out that they were okay and they sent them down. And I still haven't 
received a response. Now, I did talk to the clerk who uh, tried to explain something to me. Um, but uh, today I went to the law library and got the Pennsylvania uh, Bar, Bar Institute's book on right to knows. And what I'm asking the council to do is <clears throat> I'm asking you to tell me why this information can't be furnished to me. Because from what I've read in this you know, right to know law from 2005, they were correct. And, I, and uh, from what I understand, I think I'm entitled to an explanation so that I can um, clarify them if counsel or whoever can't seem to understand them because I really think they're straightforward. And um, you know, the law even allows the council or any branch of government to even do right to knows just by a verbal request. And I, and I really, you know, I, I'm really troubled that it's such, a, it's such a hard thing to get information, especially when all this information came through counsel. I mean, um, you know, I've gone to other people that uh, have been using some of these laws in one of them, and they told me that that law came through counsel, so I had to do a right to know and went to the administrator. And evidently, you know, they sent them down for counsel to comply with the law, but somehow they seem to be hung up. So I'm just asking counsel tonight to furnish me with an explanation of why these rights to know may be deficient so that any deficiencies can be overcome and this information can be uh, delivered to me. Um, and on a different note tonight, you know, I, I really think that people have to realize that I know this council is going to just keep borrowing and borrowing and borrowing, but it, did it ever occur to council or anybody else that maybe the city is in so much debt that borrowing isn't the answer? And, you know, I've talked to a lot of people about the Scranton Lace Project as I spoke about that here previously, and the North Scranton Junior High School project. And every person I've talked to is of the opinion that this money is being wasted, that we're giving people with money more money, and the projects just aren't getting done. North Scranton's still waiting for more money. The lace works, well, we can't talk about what's going to happen there. But you know, we need to move money into neighborhoods for people who live here. And when we talk about understanding the plight of ordinary people in this city, I don't know how anybody in government can say they understand that considering the very steep population decreases we've endured. And I can't even seem to get information on the cost of the pools and the lifeguards because I've talked to the county and the school district about helping the city to open these pools and I can't even get that information. I mean, I find it remarkable that we can say this city government functions in any way whatsoever. And I can't understand how council and the mayor couldn't have come together for the public good to make sure these pools are open this year. But maybe you can explain that. But I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gerard Hetman. Good evening, council. Good, Good evening. evening. Gerard Hetman from the Lackawanna County Department of Community Relations. Uh, to begin this evening, I do have one more information item regarding the Lackawanna County budget for 2013. May I please approach? Yes, yes. please. Thank you. Thank you. As members of council may be aware, from the time that the Lackawanna County tentative budget for 2013 was finalized in October, to now, uh, the county has faced an unexpected revenue shortfall of 1 .7, approximately $1.75 million, which stems from the loss of state inmates, which are normally housed at the Lackawanna County Prison. Uh, to address this budget shortfall, the Lackawanna County Commissioners have come up with a series of cost-saving measures through reductions, consolations, consolidations, and also one new revenue item, which we'll see some prisoners from Bradford County housed at the Lackawanna County Prison. The item in front of you shows you those items of budgetary savings and what percentage they factor in to that $1.75 million in savings. As you can see, there's a list which gives you the color-coded breakdown 
on the savings and also the dollar amount that goes with each item. So you can clearly see where that revenue is replaced in the budget, how it's made up, and how that shortfall has been addressed by the commissioners in the final budget, uh, which went through its first reading this af uh, yesterday afternoon at the Lackawanna County Commissioners meeting. Um, to move forward, we do have a number of Christmas-themed events that will take place throughout Lackawanna County uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, the first one of those is the annual Festival of Trees, which takes place at the Electric City's Trolley Station and Museum. The opening cocktail reception for that event will be held on Friday evening, December 14th, from 5.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. And the exhibit will run from December 14th through December 31st during normal operating hours at the Electric City Trolley Museum. For more information, please call the Trolley Museum at 570-963-6590. Uh, second, and this is a particularly good one coming right before one of your regularly scheduled meetings, the Lackawanna County Commissioners invite everyone to attend the annual Lackawanna County Holiday Tree Lighting, which will take place on Thursday evening, December 6th, with a tree being lit at 6 o'clock p.m. So there's time for everyone to attend and still make it to, uh, to your meeting on time. Uh, there will be free hot chocolate and hot refreshments provided, as well as entertainment by the Robert Dale Corral. Uh, last but not least, any child that brings a new unwrapped toy valued at $5 or more will receive a free trolley ride from the Lackawanna County Trolley Museum. Those toys will be donated to the Toys for Tots program on the dates of November 23rd through November 25th. The trolley will depart the museum at 10.30 a.m., 12 o'clock noon, 1.30 p.m., and 3 o'clock p.m. on all three of those dates. And last but not least, the Santa on the Trolley program will run every weekend in December, uh, running through December 22nd, with those same departure times I just mentioned, 9.30 a.m., 11 a.m., 12.30 p.m., actually 2 o'clock p.m. in addition, and also 3.30 p.m. Reservations are suggested for that, and they can be obtained by calling the Trolley Museum at 570-963-6590. And we do actually have a large poster uh, that we can share with your office uh, to put up at your discretion to uh, promote the Festival of Trees. And as always, we thank you for your cooperation with that. And yes. last but not least, I do thank um, each member of council and also Mrs. Craig. Uh, you all received invitations to our legislative breakfast last Friday, and I appreciate uh, Mr. McGough was the only one who could make it. Uh, we thank you for your attendance, sir, and for everyone else, thank you for communicating to me. I know the rest of you were unable to attend. We thank you for letting us know in advance uh, of your attendance and when future events along that nature of planned, we'll certainly let you know, and we welcome your attendance at anything in the future that you could make to it. So thank you, and thank have you. a good thank evening. You. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, council. Dave Dobson, Good evening. resident of Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Didn't even get a chance to take my coat off. It's so fast tonight. Uh, taxes. Uh, I'd like to know across the valley, because the newspapers have been expounding that many of us pay less than $500 in city support taxes, what Throop and Dixon City and maybe Music or where have you, what they pay. And uh, on an average old house, because most of our housing is old. Um, and in Guinness Court, I have a message for somebody. They're, they're spreading graffiti around. And it's like kid PYO or P something or other, from what I could gather. You just. Uh, you just vandalized two police officers' houses <laughs> in the 500 block of Guinness Court. And nobody's going to be very sympathetic. So if there's parents out there, try to rein in the, the spray paint cans. It's probably just a bunch of silly juvenile stuff. But uh, uh, one of these days you're going to get caught, and nobody cares for a petty criminal at the very least. Steal from a bank, you know, from the inside in a three-piece suit, and everybody will just love you. They might even elect you to office someday. <laughs> um, and I'd like to see uh, some 
more petitioning to the county on uh, nonprofits. Uh, we need some help here. Uh, that figure, middle figure on the tax increase is uh, kind of scary. And uh, also, I think Pell should take, seeing as it's their bright idea with the pilot payments, they should go start going around to some of these nonprofits and giving us some help instead of having our council slandered and in a he said, they said, or she said uh, situation. Also, uh, with, and this is mainly uh, the administration, please, let's get these audits on time. This is getting ridiculous. Uh, I, every week I hear, uh, I hear about the audit still isn't in or it's still not complete. It's what, five, six months late by now? Mm -hmm. And I mean, how do you people do a job? And it just gets to the point where the paychecks won't be signed if you don't let it go. But it's it's atrocious. So we we need that audit uh, at least in the beginning of the summer. And uh, okay, the golden parrot. We have we the people. They're signing petitions that they'd like to secede from the union. And many of the states, now Texas is a big state, and they actually pay more to the federal government than what they receive. But uh, I think it's Alabama gets $2.09 for every tax dollar they pay to the federal government. And we the people want to secede from the union. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, please make sure that my social security check is in the mail, even though I <laughs> signed the petition. <laughs> and. Uh, we're up to uh, 6,000 suitcases of fresh $20 bills spent on a 2012 election. And uh, <laughs> 6,000 suitcases of $20 bills. Uh, uh, that's atrocious. And uh, there's a congressman from Georgia. He denounced evolution and the theories on the universe, Einstein. He may serve on the House of Science, uh, Science Committee. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, come on, you know. He, he de described it as a pit of sin from the gates of hell, uh, uh, Einstein's theories. I think Einstein is a little smarter than him. And one other thing, and I'll talk to uh, our county representative. I was a little alarmed uh, on an article I read on the county budget where GEDs were being taken out of the county jail. Uh, the opportunity to earn your high school education. And I mean, let's keep in mind that someday these people get out and we have to live amongst them. We have to ride on a bus next to them or uh, park a car or pull out in front of them. And we don't need a bunch of people that are uh, enraged by, uh, by the way their life is going. So. A GED is at least the start. I was very appalled with uh, the Shiverella and Carnahan case because a lot of those kids got out of school with, or got out of uh, uh, that reform school without a high school diploma. So they were taken and put in for silly reasons, uh, run and profit, and they got out without a high school diploma. Where is that going? Thank you and have a good Thank night. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Oh, Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Janice. Hi, Chris, Chrissy. No hat well, again. Tomorrow, Janet, we'll lower how you think for me. We'll lower think we'll lower. Mm -hmm. There you go. There. Well, games tomorrow night, Janice. Games tomorrow night. Yep. No more at Old Forge. Abbott and the Saturday. One more knock for Janet. She's got to win Friday night. Right. I hope they win. Wish them all good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Chrissy. Thank you. A good evening, Council Marie Schumacher, city resident and taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'd like to start off tonight by asking whether um, agenda item 2B, uh, does that comparison uh, compare 2011 with 2012 adjusted to remove the tax increase as well as the raw uh, figure for collections? Um, 
if you don't know the answer offhand, um, I, during motions will be fine. And also, Mr. Joyce, I, I asked a while back about whether why the uh, controller's report for the end of August showed significantly higher collections than what you were saying was the cumulative through mid-September. Did you ever find out why? Um, I'm still working on that, actually. One, one thing I did find out is that um, the reporting between the single tax office and the controller's office sometimes differs. For instance, the single tax office will submit a check in, say, August 31st, for instance, and okay. the city will oh. receive the check in the beginning of September, causing a difference in reporting because the city will report it as September revenue, the tax office will report it as August. But that would that would make it um, lower. I mean, that should make it the other way. Um, but well, maybe I'll talk to you on that offline. I don't want to use my whole five minutes on that one item because. Um, I'd like to move on to the, the budgeted amount for the 2004 sale leaseback of the DPW for 2012 is $535,000, but only about $75,000 has been expended through September. Why haven't these payments been made, and will part of the massive debt we've incurred this year be used to make this debt current, or will we be nearly uh, half a million dollars in arrears at the beginning of 2012? And to whom do we owe this back rent, and is there a late payment penalty, and if so, how much? I, I will research that question for you. I, I apologize. I do not know the exact answer offhand. Okay. Well, I think the foregoing shows a, a need. There are a lot of items in the controller's report where it's pretty obvious either, well, either the revenues were overstated uh, or expenses were overstated and, um, or they're, we're not making payments on them um, because they're, if you just divide by 12, we're nowhere near where we should be in payments. So I, with that in mind, I would uh, believe that we need a 2013 cash flow forecast. Uh, I think I would like for you to uh, provide the same with uh, when the budget is introduced in, in two weeks. Uh, I don't think it's sufficient any longer to just have numbers on an annual basis. I think we need to know how they're how they're dispersed across the, the year so we can track and know where we are at, in any given month. So I would ask you for that for 2013 along with the budget. Um, in regard, again, to the market-based revenue opportunities agreement, um, the recovery plan stated that the city would pursue an RFP process to select a commission broker to help identify potential city assets available for an MBRO uh, proper, assist with the establishment of a policy framework and market available and approved opportunities to begin in January 2013. Is this going to happen or will the expected revenue have to be reduced because the program didn't get started on schedule? I pretty well check the legal notices every day and I have not seen that announcement. Uh, that solicitation for I will bring that up with our business administrator and find out if that is going to be instituted. It's my okay. understanding that it will. Um, it, but it won't be starting in January 20, 2013, will it, if they haven't solicited a bid yet? I'll ask him, okay. but I'm assuming that they, they are behind if they haven't solicited a bid. And, and also maybe an update on when the uh, parking enhancement uh, demonstration or whatever is being called that trial is going to be begin I'll find out the exact dates on that as well okay and then back on the the MBROs um, will council be setting the standards uh, for what is acceptable to be advertised what products what solicitations what buildings do we know I mean, we don't know the buildings because you haven't selected a, a broker yet, but who is going to set the parameters for what's acceptable? I mean, alcoholic beverages, uh, you know, what? I think that's, I, I know that's created an issue in, in some other cities that have MBROs, and I would highly recommend that you uh, 
that you as a council set that set the policy for what is acceptable along with with the brokerage um, and then we've heard nothing about the sale leaseback program that's uh, since the revised recovery plan was was passed are you able to identify the property being sold and the buyer and the status of this transaction Frank, do you know? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm writing no, down the yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will address that with our business administrator as well. The, okay. As and far then, as what and property I, yeah. will be. I would also like to request then you, that you also obtain a list of the bills paid with the proceeds of the first unfunded uh, debt borrowing, as well as the outstanding bills by vendor. Okay. Uh, and how those will be covered. And then I guess we don't have the uh, the loan status uh, in Mr. Rogan's absence. Is that true? That's true. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Five A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Uh, since you asked last week if we would be brief, I will defer until after uh, Attorney Hughes you know, presents the information on that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And Councilman McGough, do you have comments or motions this evening? Uh, just briefly, uh, last week I reported that the Kaiser Valley uh, Citizens Association was conducting a safety meeting regarding the closure of uh, the fire station on Luzerne Street. Um, it was a follow-up to the meeting from the prior month. And Engine 7 was opened yesterday and the, and the prior day uh, for the first time. They did receive the air quality results that enabled, uh, you know, the firefighters to return to those buildings. There was a lot of questions asked and uh, the chief was unable to attend the meeting apparently he was out of town and the mayor had a function that he was attending uh, last evening a few blocks away um, but the questions were asked still not answered there's newspaper our newspaper reporter was at the meeting last night but uh, one of the biggest points that was not brought out in the newspaper that was brought out at the meeting again why we don't have the coverage that we have with the firefighters is the fact that three and a half million dollars was turned back to the federal government. That would have supplied us and kept our fire stations open for the next two years. Not one word of that was in the newspaper, yet many people mentioned that last evening, and I myself brought it up. That is a fact. If that money was here today, those stations would still be open. Now there was a fire on Harrison Avenue yesterday and last week I believe I said we're going to have a logistical problem with the bridge closures in this city. Now the close, since engine 15 in Petersburg has been permanently closed, that was the protection company for, for the Hill section and Dunmore. The next engine would be engine 10 on the East Mountain, which is always open now since they had the fire up there. They man that with overtime if they have to. But in order for that fire truck to respond to the fire on Harrison Avenue, it has to respond, it has to come down from the top of the East Mountain, go down to Cedar Avenue, make a roundabout loop, and come back up Mulberry Street because it cannot go over Harrison Avenue and it cannot go over the expressway now, the complex. So time is a big factor. And I stated at last week's uh, announcement of the Kaiser Valley meeting that it's just not Kaiser Valley or West Side that's being affected by these closures. It's the whole city. Engine 10 responding to that fire leaves that whole mountain open. And they're responding to a lot more calls now because of the other closures. Two of the stations that are, that are open all the time right now are South Side across from the 20th Ward and the East Mountain. Rescue one on uh, Wyoming Avenue, that of course is, is open. But engine four right here in fire headquarters, closed. 
they could have been uh, the first company to respond up to Harrison Avenue. Closed. Um, you know, when the firefighters arrived there, they said they thought the fire started in the attic because it was coming out of the attic, but it was a basement fire. Perhaps if we had the adequate equipment in place, it could have been confined to a basement. And uh, unfortunately, and somebody brought something up at the meeting last night and, and it hit a nerve with me and it could happen that, uh, <clears throat> you know, God forbid something happens to someone's home or family because, and this is their, their exact quote, because of the malfeasance of this administration turning back that money. There could be a major lawsuit here. That's what I'm worried about. But I don't want to see a disaster happen to force these stations to open. I'm just still irritated and disappointed that this council was not even consulted before that money was turned back. The mayor did it unilaterally. I don't even believe the fire chief had any knowledge of it till after the fact. And it's a shame. You know, our taxes are going up, but your services are going down. And we're trying our hardest here to, to do the best we can and provide you with the services we have. But, you know, when things are done unilaterally and we don't have control over it, that's, this is what happens. They could tout all the parks and, and, and the uh, apartments downtown and stuff like that. Uh, you know, downtown is becoming a, a, you know, a neighborhood with the apartments and everything. Unfortunately, they've taken the first responder from the downtown and closed that. And, and, and I hate to come back someday and say, I told you so. I don't know what the answer is. You know, West Side Kaiser Valley residents tried to be proactive rather than reactive, like, like East Mountain after the fire. They're trying to get things done before there is a disaster or catastrophe. But there's a lot of apathy out there. And the only way we're going to get things done in this city or, or, or get the attention of the administration, if you're worried about your public safety, is to get to the mayor, uh, write them, call them, whatever. But uh, they started a petition back in Kaiser Valley last night. And, uh, you know, this isn't over yet. But I don't want to see anything happen to anyone in this city. They deserve the best... Uh, public safety for their tax dollars and I could go on and on but I apologize I'll cut it at that point thank you thank you and councilman Joyce do you have any comments or motions yes I do to begin I would ask that everyone keep the family of former city clerk Jay Saunders in their prayers Jay Saunders who was a distant cousin of mine fought a courageous battle with pancreatic cancer he was a very honorable man and he will be sorely missed by his family and friends. Tonight, my intention is to briefly discuss the 2013 operating budget that was sent to council by the administration today. The legislation for the budget will not go on to the agenda for two weeks due to the Thanksgiving holiday next week. The budget will have its first reading on November 29th and subsequent second and third readings on December 6th and 13th. In the following weeks, I will elaborate more on the budget and its content. To some council members, the budget may seem foreign since this is the first time they are seeing it. However, it is not foreign to me. Last Friday, I met with Business Administrator Ryan McGowan to discuss the budget. On Monday, I met with Councilwoman Evans, Mayor Doherty, and Business Administrator Ryan McGowan to discuss the budget again. Yesterday, I met again with Mayor Doherty and Business Administrator Ryan McGowan to discuss the budget. My goal is to take a proactive approach to the budget rather than a reactive approach to the budget and work with the administration so that they produce a budget that is acceptable and adequate on a united front that keeps the city fiscally solvent. As dictated by the revised recovery plan and as promised, the real estate tax increase in the budget has been limited to 12 percent. 
As one may know, Scranton City Council decreased taxes in 2011 by nearly 11% and increased taxes by two, in 2012 by nearly 5%. If this budget is passed as is, the overall tax increase will be 6% since this council took office. In regard to other major taxes and fees besides the real estate tax, the wage tax is not being increased and will remain at 2.4% for the city and of course 1% for the school district. The refuse fee is not being increased and will remain at $178 per year. The local services tax is not being increased and will remain at $52 per year. The parking tax is also not being increased. There will be an increase in the real estate transfer tax from 2.8% to 2.9%, along with a business privilege and mercantile tax increase from 0.875 mills to 1 mill. This will return these taxes to their 2010 levels. The budget also contains an amusement tax and a commuter tax of 1%, which is pending court approval. Last year, the budget was slightly over $85 million. This year, the budget is over $109 million. One may be wondering why. The largest contributor to the increase in the budget is the Supreme Court ruling in favor of the fire and police unions. The estimated cost of this award is over $17 million, and it is something that must be paid to the police and fire unions. Since the city does not have the money on hand to pay this award, the money must be borrowed. It is estimated by our business administrator that the cost of borrowing will be an additional $1.7 million expense in ex er, a $1.7 million expense next year. Along with the Supreme Court award and the lump sum repayment to the fire and police union unions, there will also be an increase to the MMO, which stands for Minimum Municipal Obligation. The Minimum Municipal Obligation is the minimum amount that the city must contribute to fund pensions for the year. The MMO was determined by Thomas Anderson and must be adhered to in order to keep our very underfunded pension accounts uh, stable. For the non-uniform city workers, the MMO will be, for 2013, will be roughly $1 million. This is up roughly, or this is up from roughly $800,000 last year. The MMO for the IAM union pension will be roughly $300,000. This encompasses most of the DPW and is similar to this year. The MMO for the fire department pension will be $4.6 million in 2013. This is up from $1.8 million this year. The MMO for the police pension will be $3.6 million in 2013. This is up from $1.5 million this year. Overall, the total MMO that the city is required to contribute to fund pensions in 2012 is $4.4 million. In 2013, this will jump to $9.5 million, which is an overall increase of $5.1 million. In addition to the lump sum repayment to the police and fire unions in the Supreme Court Award, the Supreme Court Award also set certain staffing levels to occur within the fire and police departments. The Supreme Court Award dictated that there must be a certain amount of personnel per fire apparatus and that there must be a certain amount of officers on duty per shift. The requirement that there must be a certain amount of officers per shift has resulted in an increase of police overtime. This year, the budgeted amount for police overtime was $120,000. In 2013, the budgeted amount for police overtime will be $550,000. This will ensure that the city is covered with an adequate number of officers per the order of the Supreme Court award. And of course, this is an increase of slightly over $400,000. The sum of the increases that I just mentioned totals $24.2 million, which constitutes the spending gap between this year's budget and last year's budget. 
As I stated, tonight my intention was simply to provide a brief overview of the operating budget. I will discuss the budget in greater detail in the following weeks, and that's all I have for tonight. Certainly. Sure. Began. Um, uh, just something uh, Mr. Joyce uh, brought up: the, the delinquent refuse fees, the the bills that were sent out. Uh, there are some problems with those. Many people are experiencing some problems. If if you feel that you have uh, received the notice that uh, of the of something that you have paid, um, please see if you can find proof of payment, be it a canceled check, or uh, if you go to the bank. Uh, most banks have a record of your checks. If you don't have the canceled checks, uh, if you can find proof of payment the uh, you know bring it to the treasurer's office so that the records can be um, brought up to date and uh, your problem rectified um, and I say this because I received a delinquent notice and uh, have had to go through the process of trying to find proof of payment um, the other thing that I would like to mention on this for many people this notice is the first one that they have ever seen uh, that delinquent notices have not been sent and some people and, and granted many people have just not paid that refuse fee but for some people who may have inadvertently not paid it by mistake whatever circumstances this is the first time they're seeing or knowing that there's a delinquency and now they're being you know hit with penalties and interest and fees and whatever else um, I would like to in the futures um, see if somehow delinquent notice can be placed on the subsequent year's bill like you might receive on a credit card or anything else that if you're late or you haven't paid that on your subsequent bill it indicates such so that you can make the payment even if it is late it, it's not going to be a year or two mm -hmm. um, late but uh, please if, if you do have a problem with your um, with that notice please find proof of payment take it to the treasurer's office and get it taken care of and that's all thank you thank you uh, good evening before I begin my comments I just wanted to very briefly respond to some statements made tonight um, by Mr. Morgan. First of all, with regard to the right to know request, council members do not handle those requests. Uh, it is my understanding from your statements that you would have spoken with Mrs. Craig and she would have, I'm sure, answered your questions and provided explanations to you. Now, that may not have been satisfactory in your estimation, but it has been addressed. Um, in addition, contrary to the statements made by Mr. Morgan, um, City Council is not the source of the borrowing, nor is it in charge of the borrowing. Rather, the administration called for borrowing to prevent a financial collapse in 2012. And as everyone here would recall, uh, it was due to the extreme levels of unbridled borrowing and spending from 2002 through 2008 that the financial house of cards collapsed in 2012. And this borrowing became necessary in order to keep the city of Scranton alive financially and functioning so that public services and public safety can continue to be provided to all of our citizens. Um, now, although today, November 15th, marks the deadline for the presentation of the mayor's proposed 2013 operating budget, it cannot be included on City Council's agenda in fifth order for introduction until the November 29th, 2012 Council meeting. 
the budget would have had to have been submitted to Council's office prior to today in order to have been introduced tonight. Since Council will not be in session on November 22nd due to the Thanksgiving holiday, a formal presentation of the budget by City, City Council Finance Chair Frank Joyce and a fifth order vote will occur on November 29th. However, included on this evening's lengthy agenda are four pieces of legislation that particularly merit discussion. In fifth order for introduction is an ordinance to implement an amusement tax effective January 2013. This tax is contained in the city's revised recovery plan and must be adopted in 2012 prior to the December 10th commuter tax court hearing. If revisions or clarifications are necessary, the ordinance may be amended in seventh order. Council members should contact City Solicitor Paul Kelly or Council Solicitor Boyd Hughes with any suggestions for amendments. In addition, the City Administration submitted emergency legislation to Council's office today for $150,000 for the December 1st, 2012 bond payment for the Scranton Parking Authority. At this time, I ask Attorney Hughes to comment on this legislation regarding the SPA bond payment. Yes, Madam Chairman. Um, the total amount of the bond payment that's due on the first is eight hundred thirteen thousand four hundred eighty one dollars and twenty five cents um, I have requested that Mr. Washoe and Central Parking through Central Parking uh, give us an update on their proposed budget that Central adopted uh, effective as of October 1st um, it's been a little while uh, in order to put that together. Um, I did receive an email from Mr. Washoe that the total amount after expenses that Central Parking had for the month of October was $112,013. Now that's only revenue from the garages itself. Uh, Mr. Washoe has an additional $38,000, which is the net amount on the lease the leasing of the uh, stores within the garages and I believe some other monies uh, we put that together there was hundred and fifty thousand dollars that would be available to make the bond payment um, the money from November revenues would not be available for the bond payment because they would not come in um, until sometime in around December 10th or 12th so therefore, there was a deficit of $663,481.25 that the city, pursuant to its guarantee of the bonds, uh, would have to transfer to the trustee on or before December 1st. Back in October, when I wrote Mr. Scopoletti, you know, my two and a half page letter that was never responded to, one of the questions that I wanted, there are seven areas that I inquired into, one of them that I wanted a response to is that what were the balances in the various debt service reserve funds and other reserve funds that are required pursuant to the indenture. Uh, Mr. Scopoletti never responded to that. Um, however, once uh, Radiant Insurance and Attorney David Dubrow in New York City, uh, once they moved to have a receiver appointed and Mr. Washoe was appointed, uh, of course, they had a new trustee appointed. They removed PNC Bank and had Wells Fargo Bank appointed as the new trustee. Uh, Mr. Dubrow informed me that there was a prox that the 2007 uh, debt service reserve fund uh, had excess funds probably of close to $800,000. Um, as a result, I've had correspondence and conversations with Attorney Dubrow, uh, I sent him an email on November 10th, I believe that was Monday, and requested, I set forth that the amount 
of the shortfall of $663,481.25 uh, that the city would be responsible for that in the 2007 debt service reserve fund uh, there was approximately $1,840,000. Uh, I believe there had to be somewhere around a million in maintained in that debt service reserve fund. And I requested that Radian um, make provision to pay the entire amount from the surplus funds that were in the 2007 debt service reserve fund. Uh, Mr. Dubrow contacted me on, I believe it was Tuesday, I keep forgetting the days here, uh, on Tuesday regarding it, said that it was the position of Radian that the city should make some monetary contribution. Uh, he was looking for approximately 50 percent. I had a conversation with Ryan McGowan, the city's BA. Uh, I said, how much funds are available for us to contribute? Uh, he assured me that the city would be able to come up with $150,000. I emailed that to Mr. Dubrow. Um, he got back to me yesterday, informed me, or actually today, uh, informed me that they would accept $150,000 from the city, $150,000 from the receiver, and that the balance of almost $515,000 would, they would authorize release uh, to make that bond payment, so the city will not have to come up with that. In addition, the Parking Authority's Debt Service Reserve Fund on the 2005 bonds is about $180,000 under the reserve. Again, that's the city's responsibility. Uh, in my discussion with Attorney Dubrow, the Radian had previously stated that this was the city's responsibility to come up with $180,000. They wanted the city to come up with $90,000 in 2013 and $90,000 in 2014. After negotiations with Attorney Dubrow, um, Radian agreed that an additional $180,000 of the surplus funds in the debt service in the 2007 debt service reserve fund would be available to uh, be placed into that debt service reserve fund. So as a result, and I concluded my first email to Attorney Dubrow, you know, in, in, in the spirit of cooperation, the way that we have cooperated with Radian and the uh, insurance companies, you know, in these matters with the parking authority, uh, that we, I hope that they would pay or authorize the, re, you know, the release of all of the excess funds in the debt service reserve fund. Um, as a result, that the city's responsibility, or put it this way, not responsibility, the city is responsible for the full amount, but the liability of the city uh, on this payment will just be $150,000. Um, as a result of that, and council, the next Thursday being Thanksgiving, um, I contacted uh, the mayor and Paul Kelly to have an ordinance done authorizing the release of the $150,000 for a wire transfer uh, to Wells Fargo Bank uh, to make the bond payment. That's emergency legislation tonight uh, because if it was not done until um, after Thanksgiving, that would have been the 29th and it would have been tight. Um, so as a result of that uh, and my negotiations with Attorney Dubrow on behalf of the uh, Radian and also the other bonding company, or the insurance company, not bonding company, uh, on this that, you know, we've had a savings here of uh, $115,000 uh, and also another $180,000, which is all, almost a $700,000 liability uh, that the city has avoided through cooperation with Radiant Insurance and Attorney Dubrow. They've cooperated with us, and uh, I want to thank them for everything that they've done to make this possible and have saved the city, at least right now, over half a million dollars of monies that we don't have. Or we, if we have, we can use elsewhere and put, you know, for other payments, such as, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield and other items like that, um, and saving us uh, $90,000 uh, next year and the year after. And thank you, Attorney Hughes. City Council is very grateful to our solicitor, who single-handedly solved these pressing financial issues. 
Uh, this had not been requested by the administration. They would have been prepared to try to make full payments. This was done through the efforts of uh, one individual, our solicitor. Consequently, he saved the taxpayers of Scranton $700,000, well over half a million dollars in bond payments. Also included in sixth order of tonight's agenda are two ordinances, items 6A and 6B, that are related to the city's second unfunded debt borrowing in 2012. Again, I call on Solicitor Hughes for his comments on this legislation. <coughs> this is a little bit more complicated, but anyway, I'll try to cut to the, to the chase on this and, and explain it to council uh, and to the public. If you would look at the ordinance, uh, ordinance number 71 of 2012, I think that's the best way I can explain it. If you have it in front of you. And if you go to page two, and the ordinance is probably about 15 pages long, but if you go to page two, and the first whereas clause, it says not to borrow or to borrow uh, not to exceed $20,910,000. Uh, that's the absolute maximum. That is not what the city is borrowing. Um, that it could go up to that amount, but it depends on the conditions of the market and what the interest rate is going to be. So we are not borrowing, I say we, the city is not borrowing that amount. That's the cap, that's the ceiling. Uh, in the event that the price of the bonds comes in over $20,910,000, it does not have to be accepted by the city. They can refuse it. Um, if you go to the third whereas clause, and I believe this was a question that was asked previously, um, the city and its financing, and we refer to these as the 2000 three bonds, series A, B, C, and D. Uh, back in 2003, the total amount of that borrowing, I do have the prospectus here, but I should have had it out. I believe it was $73 million. And it was broken down into Series A, B, C, and D. Actually, it was seventy-two million three hundred thousand dollars, of which it was broken down into various series. Uh, the Series A of two thousand three was five million twenty-five thousand dollars. The Series B was thirty-five million six hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. The Series C was eighteen million one hundred forty-five thousand dollars, and the Series D was $13,480,000. Um, and with that background, when you look at the second to the last whereas clause on page two, um, the Series A bonds were originally floated. They were $5,025,000, of which as of today, there remains outstanding $1,025,000. And that's a payment that's due on September 1, 2013 and September 1, 2014. What I'll say for this also applies to the other uh, series, uh, B, C, D, and E. The only thing that the city can refinance on these are the payments that are due next year. Um, as a result, the way that this is going to be broken down by Oppenheimer uh, in their offering the unfunded debt service of nine million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars will probably be financed. Will be financed uh, this year in December. Uh, the interest payment on the series bonds two thousand three A, B, C, and D will probably be financed in January. As a result of that, by the time that the financing is made, the bond payments due on January first, two thousand thirteen, on the series A, B, C, and D uh, will have to be paid to the trustee for the sinking fund. So what is happening here is that the city will not be making the payments due. And on the Series A bond, that would be 
505,000 in 2000, on September 1st of 2013. And the payments for September, October, November, and December of the 520,000 is gonna be due on September 1st, 2014. What this financing will do on each of these issues will take, will provide the monies to pay the seven payments of principal and interest on the 2006 A bonds that are due September 1st, 2013. That'll be put into a sinking fund or be held in escrow to make that payment. And then make the first four payments that are due on the bond that's due September 1st, 2014. That's what's being refinanced. That total amount of principal and interest on those two issues is $494,798. And then what'll happen is the city will then pay that back over a period of 10 years on these bonds. So instead of coming up on this issue with 498,000 over the course of the year, there's only gonna be one payment that's gonna be made, there's, that has to be made, that's gonna be in January. The other 11 payments will be paid from the bond fund from the floating of the bonds and will be paid and held in escrow and those payments will be made and in 2000 to mature the bond on the first series that are due on September 1st, 2013, retire that and have the other four payments available uh, to be made. So then in, future, in the next nine years, um, the amount of this funding will be put in the budget so the city won't have to come up with that money. Uh, you go to the next page and you look at the second whereas clause and on the Series B bond, that was floated for 35 million 605,000 in 2003. There currently is outstanding, and that's on the third line, $29,045,000. Uh, so that's the amount that's outstanding. So what's happening is that what will be financed in this is that the payment that's due September 1st, 2013 is $845,000 of principal and interest. And that's due on September 1st of 2013 to be 880,000. So what is being done here is that the eight, the seven payments on the payment that is due on September 1st, 2013 is being financed of principal and interest. So that, that bond will be paid off in full. The bond that is due on September 1st, 2014 of 880,000, the first four months of payments on that will be financed. That total comes to $1,949,926. Um, you go down to the fifth whereas, and this is series C bonds. They were floated for $18,145,000. Principal remaining on that is $15,035,000. So now this is where it gets a little tricky because it says, not tricky, but has to be explained is that there's a payment due September 1st of 2013 of $410,000. Then you go down and on the 2000 C bonds maturing on September 1st, 2018. The way that this bond issue was structured is that the bonds mature on September 1st, 2013. The next maturity date is September 1st, 2018. There's, the bonds don't mature in that time period, but the city has to make payments in escrow of the amount that has to be paid on September 1st, 2018. So the structure of the C bonds is different on maturity dates. Most bonds mature serially, you know, every year, so many. However, 
the C bonds and the D bonds don't mature every year. The C bonds and the D bonds, there's a skip in there of four years. So that's why it has September 1st of 2018 in here. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing here is that the payments that would have to be made um, on, on this, um, we would have the payments from February 1st of 2013 to September 1st, 2013. Those bonds would then be paid off. They would be matured. And then what we are doing is making the payments from September 1st, 2013, four payments, to December 1st, 2014, which are going to go into a sinking fund to pay the bonds that mature on September 1st, 2018. So there will be 11 payments on that bond issue of $1,125,888. Uh, it's, you go down to the next two more whereas clauses on the D bonds. The D bonds that were floated in 2006 or 2003, the D bonds, uh, the total was 13,480,000, uh, of which there's 8,790,000 outstanding. And what we will be doing is making the interest payments and the principal payments that are due in 2013. Uh, there are seven of those. And then we'll be making the four payments that are due uh, from September 1st, 2014 to December, I'm sorry, 2013. Um, that totals $988,725. It's, that's, that's what is being refinanced here. Right now, it's anticipated to be refinanced in, in, in two series of financing, uh, one under the um, 9750000 for the unfunded debt, and the rest for the financing, so the city won't have to make all of those payments next year. It'll be paid through this bond issue and then spread out and amortized over a period of 10 years for repayment. And thank you. If you sir. have any questions, feel free to. <laughs> Mr. McGough, any questions? <laughs> thank you, Solicitor Hughes. City Council will suspend its rules to move both pieces of legislation <clears throat> from sixth order into seventh order tonight in order to meet the timeline necessary to accomplish this borrowing and refinancing. Next, the Office of Economic and Community Development has filed a request for a voluntary grant reduction request of $49,500 in 2013 CDBG funds in lieu of repayment of two activities that were found to be ineligible during monitoring reviews conducted in April 2011. The request is based on the city's inability to provide non-federal funds for reimbursement of the ineligible activities since it remains financially distressed. In addition, City Council received a response from OECD Director Linda Abley regarding the park located behind the 500 block of Lackawanna Avenue. She states that the park is part of phase two of the park, plaza, and pedestrian court. Funding was made available from a grant to complete the park from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, or DCNR. An addendum to the construction service agreement between OECD and Sordoni Construction Services Incorporated was executed on September 9, 2009 in the amount of $499,000. A second addendum was recently executed on October 24, 2012 by the DCNR to extend the term of the grant agreement and thereby the completion date for this park, which is located above the wall in Bogart Court, to April 30, 2013. 
Finally, City Council also received a response from Teresa Osborne, Chancellor of the Scranton Diocese, on November 9, 2012, which provides a listing of all churches, schools, parking lots, and social halls owned by the diocese, including dates of vacancies. Mrs. Craig, please contact the County Tax Assessor's Office for the assessments of those properties that are closed and therefore taxable. And that's it. 5B, authorizing the vacation of an unopened right-of-way known as the 200 block of McDonough <coughs> Street, consisting of an area 150 feet long between 39.31 and 39.62 feet wide, located between Gred Court, undeveloped, and Colliery Avenue in the city of Scranton, as more particularly described in the legal description and map attached hereto, under and subject to a permanent easement and right of way granted to the sewer authority of the city of Scranton, Pennsylvania, over the entire vacated area. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, an ordinance to provide revenue for the city of Scranton by imposing a tax upon the privilege of attending or engaging in amusements, including every form of entertainment, diversion, sport, recreation, and pastime, requiring all persons, partnerships, associations, and corporations conducting places of amusements imposing duties and conferring powers upon the treasurer of the city of Scranton, prescribing the method and manner of collecting the tax imposed by this ordinance, and imposing penalties for the violation thereof. At this time, I'll entertain a, <coughs> excuse me, a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, I just have one question on it. Uh, are there any exemptions to this? And I speak particularly of schools, churches, nonprofits. Those were the um, questions that I had posed at last week's meeting. And I believe we received a response from Attorney Kelly. Um, he has received additional information from other municipalities and townships who do um, levy an amusement tax and provide exemptions for the, the types of activities that you and I have enumerated. Mm -hmm. And so he is going to be reviewing that. And I do believe that the tax will be, or the legislation, I should say, for the tax will be amended uh, in seventh order. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D, appointment of Nancy D. Bizignani, 1200 Pine Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18510, as a member of the Historical Architecture Review Board for an additional five-year term. Mrs. Bizignani's current term expired on October 11, 2012, and her new term will expire on October 11th, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Craig, if you can contact um, uh, Mrs. or Ms. Bizignani and all of the other appointments and ask them for a letter of interest to ensure that they would like to be a part of harm um, I think maybe uh, we're looking the for it because they've they've served already they're, oh, they're having sorry. their terms renewed I think what we're requesting is a resume from both individuals uh, in order that council could consider reappointing them I know that uh, although I may be familiar with these two individuals I believe we have at least three council members who are not, which necessitates the resume. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 
5E, appointment of John Moore, 315 13th Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Historical Architecture Review Board for an additional five-year term. Mr. Moore's current term expired on October 11, 2012, and his new term will expire on October 11, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5F, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board and approving the Certificate of Appropriateness for Magical Markers Vinyl Graphics, 529 Northern Boulevard, Chinchilla, Pennsylvania, for the installation of a 16-ounce Vinyl Flex face printed banner measuring 30 and 3 quarter inches high by 272 and 3 quarter inches wide filled with an assigned panel recess at 516 Lackawanna Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5G, emergency certificate, amending file of council number 56, 2011, an ordinance entitled General City Operating Budget 2012 by transferring $150,000 from various account numbers listed below to account number 01401-15319-4299, non-departmental expenses operating transfer debt service, Scranton Parking Authority, to provide funding for the Scranton Parking Authority debt payment due December 1st, 2012. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5G be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. I make a motion to suspend the rules to move item 5G to 6th and 7th order to be considered for final passage based on the attached emergency certificate. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. A. Reading by title, call of council number 71, 2012, an ordinance. An ordinance of the city of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, setting forth its intent to issue one or more series of federally taxable and or tax exempt general obligation bonds or notes of the city in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $20,910,000 collectively of the bonds. Pursuant to the act of the General Assembly of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, PACS 53, chapters 80 82, as amended, known as the Local Government Unit Debt Act, paren the act and paren finding that the private sale by negotiation is in the best financial interest of the city, determining that such bonds shall evidence non-electoral debt of the city, specifying that such indebtedness to be incurred to provide funds for a certain project of the city consisting of all or any of the following. One, funding unfunded debt of the city. Two, funding a portion of the city's outstanding general obligation bond, Series A of 2003. Three, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding general obligation bond, Series B of 2003. Four, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding federally taxable general obligation pension funding bonds, Series C of 2003. Five, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding federally taxable general obligation bonds, Series D of 2003. And six, funding necessary reserves and paying the costs and expenses of issuance of the bonds, setting forth the reasonable estimated useful lives of the capital projects that are to be financed or refinanced by the bonds, accepting a proposal for the purchase or arrangement of the private placement of such bonds or private sale by negotiation to financial institutions, qualified institutional buyers, and or accredited investors, providing that such bonds, when issued, shall, con shall constitute a general obligation of the city, fixing the denomination, series designation, dated date, interest payment dates, maturity dates, interest rates, redemption provisions, optional and mandatory redemption provisions, paren if applicable in paren, and place of payment of the principal of an interest on such bonds, authorizing specified officers of the city to contract with the paying agent for its services in connection with the bonds, setting forth the substantial form of the bonds, evidencing the debt, 
authorizing execution and attestation of such bonds, providing covenants relating to debt service applicable to such bonds to the extent required by the Act, and pledging the full faith, credit, and taxing powers of the City in support thereof, creating a sinking fund for each series of bonds in connection with such series of bonds to the extent required by the Act, designating the paying agent to be the sinking fund depository, providing a covenant to ensure prompt and full payment of such bonds when due, setting forth registration and transfer provisions with respect to such bonds, authorizing the execution of one or more investment agreements by specified officers of the city, paren if applicable in paren, and the purchase of certain U.S. Treasury obligations or other securities or investments in connection with the project and the refunding of prior bonds, authorizing and directing specified officers of the city to do, to take, and to perform certain specified required necessary or appropriate acts to affect the issuance of the bonds, including without limitation the preparation of a debt statement and borrowing base certificate, and the filing of specified documents with the Department of Community and Economic Development, all as required by the Act, declaring that the debt to be evidenced by such bonds together with all other indebtedness of the city will not be in excess of the applicable limitation imposed by the Act, authorizing proper officers of the city to deliver the bonds upon the approval of the Department of Community and Economic Development, if applicable, setting forth certain covenants precluding the city from taking actions which would cause the bonds to become arbitrage bonds or private activity bonds, as those terms are used in the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended, paren the code and paren, and applicable regulations promulgated thereunder, authorizing the execution of a continuing disclosure certificate and covenant to comply with the provisions thereof, if applicable, authorizing the execution of one or more escrow agreements by and between the city and the escrow agent named therein in connection with the refunding of the prior bonds, approving the form of and ratifying the preparation, use, and distribution of the preliminary placement memorandum and a placement memorandum by the purchaser or placement agent in connection with the marketing of the bonds, authorizing and directing the preparation, execution, and delivery of all other required documents and the taking of all other required action, providing when this ordinance shall become effective, providing for severability of provisions and repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinance insofar as the same shall be inconsistent herewith. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I make a motion to amend item 6A as per the following. Inserting a new section 28 which reads as follows. The city shall provide the funds to pay the 2013 debt service required on the bonds issued to the fund by the unfunded debt service which shall be transferred for, to the paying agent for deposit into the sinking fund on or before December 31st, 2012. Mm -hmm. Number two, sections 28 to 31 shall be renumbered 29 to 32. Second. Are there questions on the amendment? All those in favor of the motion to amend item 6A signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Can we reread it now with the amendment? <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to read it with the amendment. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6A, as amended, pass reading by title. Second. Thank you. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of council number 72, 2012, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to levy a real estate tax millage increase for a period of 10 years dedicated to retiring the unfunded debt incurred in calendar year 2012 in the amount of $9,750,000 and directing the city treasurer to separate the proper portion of the real estate taxes received from the single tax office during such 10-year period and forward same to a separate account to service and retire the unfunded debt. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6C, formerly 5G, emergency certificate. Reading by title, file of council number 73, 2012, an ordinance 
amending file of council number 56 2011 an ordinance entitled general city operating budget 2012 by transferring $150,000 from various account numbers listed below to account number 01401 <coughs> non-departmental expenses operating transfer debt service Scranton Parking Authority to provide funding for the Scranton Parking Authority debt payment due December 1st, 2012, emergency certificate attached. You've heard reading by title of item 6C. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6C pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. I make a motion to suspend the rules to move item 6A as amended and item 6B to seventh order for final passage. Second. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Is there anyone who wishes to address council on items 6A, 6B, six or six C that have been moved to seventh order. Yeah, this is procedural, but there is no 5G on the end of the on the agenda that we were provided, and I thought all agenda items had to be advertised a day before the um, before they were to be voted on. 5G is the emergency legislation. Yeah. Yes. Well, in the case of an emergency, no, it isn't. It isn't advertised a day in advance because it was just presented to council's office today, and I believe that Solicitor Hughes, during his uh, explanation of the bond payment for the Scranton Parking Authority, explained the need for That's the emergency. That's for those of us who are here, but there might have been other people who might have been interested. I just, I don't know. I think they need to move the Radisson up here because this is getting to be the railroad station. Just move it on through. Well, if Miss, thank you, um, Miss Schumacher. If we don't do this, then we can pay the uh, seven hundred thousand dollars rather than the one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, I want to get back to the bond payments. Have you noticed? that the amount of money owed on them, bone, them bonds is nowhere near the 21 million that you're going to be taking. So them bonds are not going to be paid off. What we are borrowing, God only knows at what percentage. That's the problem. I don't know what percentage they are. If we only had an audit where we can look at the stuff before it comes. But it's obvious to anybody that we're going to be paying on the A, B, well, maybe not A, but B, C, and D, long after I'm dead, and my pro thank God my son ain't gonna come back here. And we're gonna be borrowing this other 20 million. Now, I understand that we're in trouble, but are we gonna borrow at a greater amount than we're told that in bonds? We're not paying off the bonds. In fact, there's a lot of other stuff in there that we're supposed to be paying off. Mm -hmm. But the basic thing is, when these bonds were sold, I don't know what them bonds are, 5%, 5.5%, I think, if I can remember way back when they came out. I think it was somewhere in that neighborhood. And we're going to be borrowing today at 10% or 9.8% or 8.9%. wonder why Mr. Rogan over there was shaking his head like crazy when you talked about the refinancing. Now, I understand we're in trouble. And I understand we're in desperate trouble, but why are we making the debt higher and higher and higher? I mean, we cannot pay off them bonds by raising taxes to cover it, 
So at least we're in on the, the DPW site and the police station and the, couple, and the lights. Oh, we needed them lights that the mayor so did. I mean, I, I applaud him for doing it. I wish he had added up all the debt that were still owed on them bonds and compared it to the 20 million, 21 million we're borrowing. But the problem is, when we borrowed that uh, 72, 73 million way back when, our rating was good. Now we're below junk bond. You're not going to get a good reading, a good rating. We know this. That 9.8 that we borrowed, or 8.9 was it? That's what we're going to be looking at. Maybe even higher now, as the debt keeps accumulating. I applaud him for what you did. I did like it. I listened to it very good. That's why I wanted to know what portion of the debt we were paying, because I knew that debt. When we borrow anything, usually you can double it. And that's what the poor people have to pay. I don't care how the politicians like to say, we're borrowing 20 million, but we're paying back 40 million. And that's how it works. That's why we where we are today. Nobody ever looked at tomorrow. Everything was today. As I told you before, parties run on contracts. And it's too bad the system is that way. Scranton is suffering from politics. That's what's destroying the city. And I'm not going to bring this up. I keep bringing it up every time. But so people know that we're not paying off them debts. We're borrowing more money to pay off all money. We're like a Ponzi. We're going to keep borrowing to pay off money back along. And eventually everything goes down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to state, though, in addition to that, and I think Mr. Spiraglia might have touched on this, in addition to the refinancing of bond payments, uh, the city will also be paying the remainder of its 2012 um, accounts, bills, that have not been paid to this point in the year. Um, I think, though, what's, what's important to also consider, ladies and gentlemen, is this. You know, I agree with what Mr. Spiraglia says, and that's why I didn't approve borrowing all those years, and everyone knows that. I felt that it should only be utilized when it's absolutely necessary in cases of emergency, which this is. And we're faced with the choice of these unfunded debt borrowings or allowing the city to go under, which will then drive up tax increases astronomically. And at the same time, your services are going to be cut in half. So for the people who are, for example, very upset about the brownouts of their fire stations, well, that situation will look palatable compared to what would happen. Because you would be cutting the fire department, the police department, and the DPW at least by 50%. Probably more. And if you read about cities where you know the, these bankruptcies have occurred, crime has run out of control in those cities for a period of several years afterwards because public services were, so, were cut so deeply. So that's what you have to consider here when we're talking about this type of borrowing. Do we borrow to keep the city going and extend that out over 10 years? Or do we throw our hands up and say, I give up can't keep borrowing and paying off borrowing, but you have to be prepared then for very big, very, very big tax increases and to lose what you now enjoy 
as the Scranton Police Department, the Scranton Fire Department, and the Scranton Department of Public Works. Mr. Dobson. Good evening. Uh, once again, uh, I have one question. I understand about the emergency and so forth. Uh, as egregious as it is, it hasn't been done by the council up here, and I still support the council that exists right now. But uh, can any of this borrowed money be redirected to uh, any other pet projects? And that's mainly a question for Attorney Hughes. In other words, can we say it's for A, and we really have B in the back of our minds somewhere? Can any of that, and I'm not considering counsel, but I know uh, what you're saying. the administration no. has been known you know, over the years to just do it. No, the money is committed. Mm -hmm. In terms of the bond payments, those funds are you know, placed into a sinking fund to make those payments each year in 2013 and 2014 as they all come due. And as for the remainder of it, it will be used to pay the outstanding bills of the city right now. And there are, there are very many. For example, uh, 1.5 million has to be repaid to the workers' comp fund. Right. Uh, healthcare has to be paid. Um, <laughs> there, are, there, there are just mm -hmm. so many. If Mr. Joyce, you want to jump in and expand on it? There's um, the money to the parking authority. There's the um, uh, DCED loan payment from the state. Um, I believe Mrs. Evans mentioned the workers' comp fund. Mm -hmm. So we're up to a couple million dollars there. I, I do have a list on my computer. I don't know the rest off the top of my head. Payroll. But I heard payroll, somewhere around yeah, five million dollars right there. Yes, we have uh, uh -huh. three payrolls left. That's roughly another three point seven million dollars. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that will be paid out of this money. Right. And I just have a, a little comment on uh, DPW. It's time that after all of this overwhelming stuff is done, we start to straighten things out with uh, an increase in the trash, especially for nonprofits that use the trash. And uh, uh, also, today on Music Street, our fine utility companies have about a dozen excavations. Now, that's not our street. But it was one year ago today that it was completed. And that's where I think a lot of our money goes. And they are externalizing their liabilities. They just patch whatever way they want. Mm -hmm. And despite the fact that we're spending tons of money, every year the streets just get worse and worse. And we can't keep up with it because they do. Um, Mr. Okay. Jackowitz, an associate of him from work, I bumped into him at, at the lot and up well, on actually, Wheeler Avenue. Uh, Mr. Dobson, we have to stay uh, okay. on the topic okay. of the three well, pieces he of had legislation. A gas leak and instead of fixing the whole street, which he could still smell gas afterwards, uh, they fixed one at a time so they didn't have to repave the street. There's where our money goes. Thank you. I'm sorry about no, that. No, thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good, uh, evening. Good evening. Apologize. I know I was probably on the sheet earlier. Uh, another commitment. I'm running a little late tonight, but uh, obviously we know the situation we're in. We know this is an emergency situation, and uh, anyone that's paid close attention certainly knows the uh, the procedure on emergency certificate legislation. Uh, we need to act now, and certainly no one ever wants to borrow. It's always a last resort, as Mrs. Evans stated moments ago. Uh, it's something that came before council in the past, and uh, you objected to it. But today, after a decade of fiscal mismanagement by the administration, reckless borrowing and spending policies, that's put us in the position we're in uh, at this point in time. And not doing this tonight, or at this point in time, uh, is going to cause us to have 
a future that isn't going to look so bright. You know, we heard, we talked about having a tomorrow. If we don't make this decision, there won't be a tomorrow. I'm somewhat of the next generation of this city. And I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. I believe in the city, and I believe we can turn the city around. I know it's going to take a lot of time. This mayor really put us in some mess, I'll tell you. And a lot of people probably doubt we could ever come out of the hole. But if we just throw in the white towel and we give up and we don't act, we won't come out of the hole. This council has been put in a tough position. You've been pinned in a corner, nobody else, because now it's in your lap. We dealt with rubber stamp councils who rubber stamped all these policies, turned a blind eye to all the spending. And we wonder why we're in debt. We wonder why consistently year after year bills continue to pile up and it all continues to escalate. Because past councils never did anything to stop it. And now you have to do something to stop it. And you have. You pulled the purse strings. You've cut fat. But there's only so much you can cut. We consistently hear each year during this time of year that we need to make cuts. Eventually it's going to come a time where we're going to need to cut into the essential services, public safety. And I don't think we want to see that happen. You know, I've been coming up here week after week disgusted that Engine 7 and Westside's been closed. Because of the, the failed policies of this administration, they let that happen. And they haven't taken our public safety serious. Well, if we think that's a problem now, that's nothing compared to what's going to happen, where there'll be less police officers on the street, there'll be less firemen on the street. And we'll have crime rates like Wilkesbury. And I don't want to be critical of Wilkesbury, but I don't think we want to be in that position where you're afraid to go outside at night or you can't leave your, your car door unlocked. Those aren't positions we want to be in. We need to act now. And, you know, I commend you for the, the responsibility you've taken. It's not easy. Raising taxes, borrowing, putting budgets together. But if we don't do this, you're looking at bankruptcy. And we've been told we should consider bankruptcy. That's not what we want. We come up here and we whine and cry that we don't want our taxes raised. Well, when you come up here at the same time and you talk about bankruptcy, you're asking for tax increases beyond your wildest imagination. And I don't think we want that, because when that happens, we have no say over that. We have say right now, and we have a chance to turn the city around. And if we don't make these decisions now, we'll never have a say. So I ask you to stay the course, continue what you're doing. You know, Councilman Joyce, we have a tremendous finance chair. When it comes to budgets, when it comes to numbers, I put him up, I put him up against anybody any day of the week. And anyone who thinks they could challenge my numbers or budgets has been misinformed. Mrs. Evans, the leadership as council president that you've put forth, continued what you're doing. Mr. Loscom, your expertise on public safety, leading us down the right path. Keep up the good work and ignore the criticism because you're doing the right thing. If people thought it was easy, as easy as they think it is, then maybe they should try giving it a shot and sit up where you are because it's not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Seventh order, 7A. For consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of council number 65, 2012, amending file of council number 6, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, imposing a tax for general revenue purposes on the transfer of real property situated within the city of Scranton, prescribing and regulating the method of evidencing the payment of such tax, conferring powers and imposing duties upon certain persons, and providing penalties by imposing the rate of the realty transfer tax at two and nine tenths percent for calendar year 2013. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. Second. On the question. Yes. Um, tonight we're introducing, or sorry, not introducing, we're taking our final vote on a, uh, a number of taxes. Usually these are implement, or these are voted on in the beginning of the year. However, this year we have a different scenario. Um, <clears throat> taxes are being introduced and the final vote is being taken before December 10th to justify to the Court of Common Pleas that we are in fact increasing other taxes and sharing burden on our own residents in effort to um, implement a commuter tax. If we do not take these measures now, 
And I know it's very easy to just say, you know, we want to wait till the beginning of the year. However, if we wait till the beginning of the year, chances are we could run into a situation that makes the case for a commuter tax less to the courts and therefore ends up in a situation where taxes would have to be increased higher. Uh, in addition to that, I think we all recall last uh, January, I believe it was, uh, when uh, council was um, voting on the tax millages for each one of its taxes. And of course, it was done at one of the earliest times in probably the last decade, yet the, st the city still lost out on a tremendous chunk of revenue on the realty transfer tax uh, from the sale of one of the hospitals. So, you know, of course, what Mr. Joyce said is primary, but I believe there's justification beyond that as well. And I think, um, you know, to say that this should not be done, you know, certainly is saying then, well, this entire process that the city has been undergoing this year should be just tossed out the window. These are all the steps that are necessary to get us where we need to go to keep the city alive, to keep the city functioning, to continue to employ over 400 people and families and to be able to provide services and public safety to everyone who lives in this city. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan, or I'm sorry, Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of council number 66, 2012, amending file of council number 7, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, imposing a mercantile license tax of two mills for the year 1976 and annually thereafter upon persons engaging in certain occupations and businesses therein, providing for its levy and collection and for the issuance of mercantile licenses, conferring and imposing powers and duties upon the tax collector of the city of Scranton, and imposing penalties by imposing the mercantile license tax at one mill for calendar year 2013. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Loskin? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C. For consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of council number 67, 2012, amending file of council number 8, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, providing for the general revenue by imposing a tax at the rate of two mills upon the privilege of operating or conducting business in the city of Scranton as measured by the gross receipts therefrom, requiring registration and payment of the tax as conditioned to the conducting of such business providing for the levy and collection of such tax, prescribing such requirements for returns and records, conferring powers and duties upon the tax collector, and imposing penalties by imposing the business privilege tax at the rate of one mill for calendar year 2013. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final pass to item 7C. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Finance, for adoption, file of council number 68, 2012, amending file of council number 17, 1994, entitled an ordinance as amended, authorizing the governing body of the city of Scranton to enact a waste disposal and collection fee 
for the purpose of raising revenue to cover the waste disposal and collection costs incurred by the City of Scranton for the disposal of refuse by imposing a waste disposal and collection fee of $178 for calendar year 2013. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Loskin? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E, for consideration by the Committee on Finance, for adoption, file of council number 69, 2012, amending file of council number 145 of 2007 entitled an ordinance renaming the emergency and municipal services tax emst to local service tax lst <coughs> and by imposing a withholding of 52 dollars for the calendar year 2013. what is the recommendation of the chair for the committee on finance as chairperson for the committee on finance i recommend final passage of item 7e second on the question Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Loskin? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7E legally and lawfully adopted. 7F, for consideration by the Committee on Finance, for adoption, resolution number 47, 2012, accepting a $750 donation from Sanofi Pasture presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7F. Second. On the question? Yes, I'd just like to thank Santa Fe Pasteur for their donation to the Scranton Fire Department. And I'll second that. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7F legally and lawfully adopted. 7G, for consideration by the Committee on Rules, for adoption, resolution number 48, 2012, appointing Marianne Wardell, 629 Depot Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18509, as a member of the zoning appeals for the City of Scranton. Mrs. Wardell will fill the unexpired term of Jim Williams, who passed away on September 29, 2012. Mrs. Wardell's term will expire on July 1, 2013. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7G. Second. Second. On the question? Yes, just uh, for the record, Mrs. Wardell had a resume on file from uh, previous experience with council, and that was um, placed with her letter of intent or interest in the position. And uh, we all wish Mrs. Wardell a very successful, productive uh, term on the zoning board. Yes. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Loskin? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7G legally and lawfully adopted. 6A is amended for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption of council number 71 2012 in ordinance to the city of scranton lackawanna county pennsylvania setting forth its intent to issue one or more series of federally taxable and or tax exempt general obligation bonds or notes of the city in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed twenty million nine hundred and ten thousand dollars collectively i'm sorry twenty million nine hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars uh, collectively the bonds pursuant to the act of the general assembly of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, PACS 53, Chapters 80-82, as amended, known as the Local Government Unit Debt Act, paren, the Act M. Paren, finding that a private sale by negotiation is in the best financial interest of the city, determining that such bonds <coughs> shall evidence non-electoral debt of the city, specifying that such indebtedness to be incurred to provide funds for a certain project of the city consisting of all or any of the following. One, funding unfunded debt of the city. Two, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding journal obligation bond series A of 2003. Three, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding journal obligation bond series B of 2003. Four, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding federally taxable general obligation pension fund bonds series C of 2003. Five, refunding a portion of the city's outstanding federally taxable general obligation bond series D of 2003. And six, funding necessary reserves and paying the costs and expenses of issuance of the bonds 
setting forth the reasonable estimate useful life of the capital projects that are to be financed and refinanced by the bonds, accepting a proposal for the purchase or arrangement of the private placement of such bonds at private sale by negotiation to financial institutions, qualified institutional buyers, and or accredited investors, providing that such bonds when issued shall constitute a general obligation of the city, <coughs> fixing the denomination, series designations, dated dates, interest payment dates, maturity dates, interest rates, redemption provisions, optional and mandatory redemption pr provisions, if applicable, and place of payment of the principal of and interest on such bonds, authorizing specified officers of the city to contract with the paying agent for the services in connection with the bonds, setting forth the substantial form of the bonds, evidencing the debt, authorizing execution and attestation of such bonds, providing covenants related to the debt service applicable to such bonds to the extent required by the Act, and pledging the full faith, credit, and taxing power of the city in support thereof, creating a sinking fund for each series of bonds in connection with such series of bonds to the extent required by the Act, designating the payment agent to be the sinking fund depository, providing a covenant to ensure prompt and full payment for such bonds when due, setting forth registration and transfer provisions with respect to such bonds, authorizing the execution of one or more investment agreements by specified officers of the city, if applicable, and the purchase of certain U.S. Treasury obligations and or other securities or investments in connection with the project and the refunding of the prior bonds authorizing and directing specified officers of the city to do, to take, and to perform certain specified required necessary or appropriate acts to affect the issuance of the bonds, including, without limitation, the preparation of a debt statement and borrowing base certificate, and the filing of specified documents with the Department of Community and Economic Development, all as required by the Act, declaring that the debt is to be evidenced by <coughs> such bonds together with all other applicable indebtedness of the city, will not be in excess of any applicable limitation imposed by the Act, authorizing proper officers of the city to deliver the bonds upon the approval of the Department of Community and Economic Development, if applicable, setting forth certain covenants precluding the city from taking actions which would cause the bonds to become arbitrage bonds or private activity bonds, as those terms are used in the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended, paren the code and paren, and applicable regulations promulgated thereunder, authorizing the execution of a continuing disclosure certificate and covenants and covenanting to comply with the provisions thereof, if applicable, authorizing the execution of one or more escrow agreements by and between the city and the escrow agent named therein in connection with the refunding of the prior bonds, approving the form of and ratifying the preparation, use, and distribution of a preliminary placement memorandum and a placement memorandum by the purchaser or placement agent in connection with the marketing of the bonds, authorizing and directing the preparation, execution, and delivery of all of the required documents and the taking of all of the required action, providing when this ordinance shall become effective, providing for severability of provisions and repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances insofar as the same shall be inconsistent herewith. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on fin Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7H. Second. As amended. As amended. On Second. the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7H as amended, legally and lawfully adopted. 7I, formerly 6B, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of Council Number 72, 2012, authorizing the Mayor and other appropriate City officials to levy a real estate tax millage increase for a period of 10 years, dedicated to retiring the unfunded debt incurred in calendar year 2012 in the amount of $9,750,000, and directing the City Treasurer to separate the proper portion of the real estate taxes received from the single tax office during such 10-year period and forward same to a separate account to service and retire the unfunded debt. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7I. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7I legally and lawfully adopted. 7J, formerly 6C, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of Council number 73, 2012, amending file of Council number 56, 2011, an ordinance entitled General City Operating Budget 2012, 
by transferring $150,000 from various account numbers listed below to account number 01401 15319 non departmental expenses, operating transfer debt service, Granton Parking Authority, to provide funding for the Scranton Parking Authority debt payment due December 1, 2012, emergency certificate attached. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7J. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7J legally and lawfully adopted. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.